If you're looking for a, an Android smartphone that is less than six inches, you're really tough out of luck because there isn't a lot of Android smartphones that are in that size category and even a lot of smartphones in general that are less than six in terms of just size. Now, this month has been really busy and we've seen a ton of devices on the channel, made a ton of videos and if you guys have enjoyed that and you keep, you're still watching, hit that subscribe button and notification icon. We're almost at 500K, so smash subscribe button. So the device we're talking about, which you've seen earlier, is the Asus Zenfone 10. This is a lovely compact device coming in at 5.9 inches. This is one of the most compact Android smartphones you find in the market. And this is something Asus has honed in with a Zenfone line. Now the Zenfone 9 last year was also compact and it's continuing its heritage. You've got five different colors. You've got it in some really interesting names, but this is a starry white. You've got like a black, a blue, um, a green, a white, and a red. And this is the starry blue right here. Now. What do you have with this device? There's a couple of things. First off, you've got this lovely display. It's, uh, as I mentioned again, it's 5.9 inches. This display does 144 hertz only while gaming, so you only have that. You don't have, uh, it is not an LTPO display, but at least you do have it well focused while gaming. You do have a front facing camera right here. Very nice compact look. It's got a little bit of a chin at the bottom, but I'm fine with it because it kind of aids well with just the size of this device. And then you've got your uh, speaker grill at the bottom. Uh, you've got USB type C. And yeah, then you've also got a headphone jack. So even in its compact size, it still has a headphone jack. This is a relatively slim device, but there's a lot of texture at the back of the device itself, where you see, of course, the color. It feels really nice. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, and this Asus Zen logo is there. Now the camera housings are big. Two cameras here on this device here. We've got a 50 megapixel and we've got 13 ultra wide. Now that 50 megapixel has something unique. It's got a six axis uh, gimbal on there and it's got an advanced EIS for better video stabilization. So that brings us to the very first thing. How do, well does the camera handle? Well, the camera has some unique features, right? You go into the camera software and you go into video, you have the ability to go into adaptive um, stabilization. And what that means is pretty much this, is that uh, adaptive stabilization allows for basically a, a little bit of a crop and also better stabilization while you're actually using the device. So let's see how that stacks up against the S23. Now I do have the S23 Plus here, yes, which is a slightly bigger device, but it has the same cameras and same functionality as the S23. So let's see how it stacks up with video, photos, and then you know wrap that up. So here's the front-facing camera on both devices. The Asus Zenfone 10, uh, it's at 1080p 30 frames, while of course the Galaxy S23 and 23 Plus go all the way to 4K60. So 4K60 on the Galaxy, and I'm just showing you what it is 1080p. Uh, you can see here on the Zenfone. So that should give you an idea of what it looks like. And uh, yeah. 4K60 with the active stabilization. 4K 30 adaptive stabilization. One difference you find with the Galaxy is that you can switch to the front facing camera right here. And then, which you can't do on most devices. You can also switch lenses so we can go to the ultra wide here to the main. And a Galaxy, of course, has three lenses on all its devices so we can zoom in and go back and you get the idea. Quite interesting.
Uh, in terms of video, S23 still takes the, the win here. I think it does a fantastic job. Uh, in terms of images, daytime images are really nice from both devices. I did prefer some of the low light from the uh, from the S23, though, in terms of the front-facing camera, I prefer that of the um, Asus Zenfone 10, even though it was uh, very noisy, but it wasn't a very soft image for what the S23 uh, provided. So in camera, I think, you know, Asus has done a decent job. Now, the 8K footage that we saw, that was quite interesting. 8K30 is just better than 8K24, in my opinion, and that's where the S23 shines. Now, what about speakers? Because you've got some really nice, interesting audio components here. You've got Dolby Atmos for the S23 and 23 Plus, but with the ASUS, you also have uh, Aptex Audio built into it uh, as well. So you've got Aptex Adaptive and you know covers all those Aptex codecs as well as high-res audio. So let's see how well the speakers sound. To be fair, it wasn't a one-to-one a, a -one comparison because the S23 Plus has slightly bigger speakers, but just giving you an idea of what the Zenfone 10 sounds like, and I thought it was pretty good and decent in terms of audio. Now, what about gaming? We've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip built into it, and honestly, gaming performance is the same across the board with the 8 Gen 2, something you don't really have to test anymore unless the manufacturer really made a big mistake. That being said though, Performance on this was really smooth and nice. What I also liked about the performance here is the fact that you've got a lot of the ASUS gaming features from the ASUS ROG phone in here. So you've got the Game Genie, you can go in, you can customize. That was actually pretty cool to see and, and uh, also experience where you can go and maximize your gameplay, look at your stats, all that fun stuff together. So that was actually pretty good. And in terms of battery life, while gaming, yes, you're going to lose quite a bit of uh, battery life there, probably around about 15% if you're doing like an hour of gaming. Uh, but when it comes to um, regular battery life, this has a 4300 milliamp battery, which is actually bigger than what you have in the S23 itself, or even the S23 Plus. And it does a really good job with the battery life. I would say it's quite impressive. I think uh, overall a solid battery life performance from this device. Now, plus that headphone jack is really good too as well. So if you're someone like me that's got a ton of headphones back there, it is something that you would definitely appreciate and use on a day-to-day -day basis. So. Overall, where does this device stand? We've got devices like the Galaxy, we've got OnePluses out there, uh, we've got Nothing Phones, uh, but what about the Asus Zenfone 10? Now, if it comes in at the price of what the Zenfone 9 launched last year, I think that is a solid offering, $699. Now, I don't have pricing at this point when I'm making this video. If I do, you'll see it on screen, but in terms of pricing the 699, I think it's a solid offering. Now that six axis gimbal sounded really nice, but I, it still didn't do much to improve the video that I wanted to see uh, in comparison to the Galaxy. But in terms of images, you're getting a really good shooter plus a super compact device. So if you have any questions or any comments, guys, let me know. Are you interested in something this small as an Android phone? Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.